Throughout American history, African Americans have been fighting for their rights. In 1865, slaves were emancipated and promised 40 acres and a mule. But the government backed out on its promise. Although slaves were freed, blacks continued to face Jim Crow laws and segregation. But in the 1950s and 60s, black people were increasingly demanding equal rights. Some leaders, such as Martin Luther King Jr., chose to protest peacefully, while others, like Malcolm X, felt that change would only come through revolution, as he famously said, by any means necessary. Another prominent group that fought for black rights was the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense, created on October 15, 1966, in Oakland, California. Huey P. Newton and Bobby Seale were the two founders. They chose the name Black Panther because the Black Panther doesn't strike first, but if attacked, it will fight back. This was a period when peaceful demonstrations were met with police brutality, attack dogs, beatings, and fire hoses. The Black Panther Party was a reaction to the reality that blacks faced at that time. They believed in the right to carry arms, openly, to protect themselves from police brutality. Huey Newton had studied the law, and according to the California Penal Code, a person could carry a gun openly unless the person had a felony conviction. Ironically, when the Black Panthers carried guns legally in California, Governor Ronald Reagan signed a law to prevent black people from carrying guns. Although the Black Panther Party was originally formed to address the problems in Oakland, at its peak it had chapters in about 61 cities and 26 states. Their boldness, pride, and sensationalized media coverage caused a surge in party membership and exposure. The Black Panthers were known as a militant group. However, they were about much more than guns. They had a 10-point platform that outlined what they stood for. Some of these included full employment, decent housing, health care, education, justice, peace, and the immediate end of police brutality. The Black Panther Party had a number of social programs including free breakfast, medical clinics, and a legal aid program. At its peak, the Black Panther Breakfast Program was feeding thousands of kids a day. In a 1969 U.S. Senate hearing, the National School Lunch Program Administrator admitted that the Panthers fed more poor school children than the state of California. The Illinois chapter of the Black Panther Party was one of the most influential branches of the Black Panther Party. The Illinois chapter was founded in 1968. The founding members included Fred Hampton and Bobby Rush, who is currently a U.S. Congressman. Fred Hampton was chosen to be the main spokesperson for the Illinois chapter because of his oratorial skills. Fred Hampton was from Maywood, a middle-class Chicago suburb. From a young age, he was very interested in activism and was a skilled public speaker. By the age of 17, he was the head of the youth chapter of the NAACP, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. In that position, he gathered many young people to join the group. Fred Hampton became the deputy chairman of the Illinois chapter and, in 1968, created the Rainbow Coalition. The Rainbow Coalition was a partnership formed by different racial groups to fight for common goals in a deeply segregated Chicago. These groups opposed political corruption, poverty, police brutality, and displacement from urban renewal. The Rainbow Coalition was unique because it was formed by youth, led by blacks, and because it tried to resolve long-standing racial and ethnic tensions within these groups. The original organization of the Rainbow Coalition included the Black Panthers, the Young Patriots, the Young Lords, and Rising Up Angry. The Young Patriots were a group of white Appalachian migrants who rose out of uptown Chicago to combat the poverty and unemployment in their neighborhoods. They originally came from a group called JOIN, Jobs or Income Now. They left the group because they felt it was being dominated by middle class college students. They felt that only the people who experienced depression could change depression. The Young Lords were a Puerto Rican group in Chicago. Once just a street gang, in 1967, they became the most revolutionary organization of Puerto Rican youth in the country. The Young Lords leader, Jose Chacha Jimenez, learned about the Black Panthers and their activism while in jail. He was inspired by the Panthers to focus on fighting unfair laws and policies, like urban renewal, rather than fighting other gangs. The fourth group that joined the Rambo Coalition was Rising Up Angry, a group of young whites from Logan Square who wanted to organize the poor and working class whites. Like the Young Patriots, this group also came from joint and left for the same reason. The Rainbow Coalition disproved claims that the Panthers had an anti-white agenda. One of the least reported aspects of the Rainbow Coalition, as co-founder Bob Lee points out, is that the Panthers 
extended a hand to suffering white folks. As Fred Hampton says, you don't fight racism with racism, we're going to fight racism with solidarity. The Rainbow Coalition shows how grassroots activists on the fringes of Chicago politics organized youth in different neighborhoods. This coalition was in action from the late 1960s to the early 1970s. Though one of the smaller coalitions in history, it became one of the most influential. The charismatic leader of this coalition, Fred Hampton, was sadly murdered on December 4, 1969 at the young age of 21. The FBI, the Chicago Police, and the Cook County State's Attorney's Office cooperated in his murder. In September 1968, John Edgar Hoover, director of the FBI, publicly identified the Black Panther Party as the single greatest threat to national security and had set out to destroy it. A secret operation within the FBI called COINTELPRO, the counterintelligence program, had been created to eliminate black nationalist groups in America. The Black Panthers were the target of about 245 of the 290 COINTELPRO actions. The program was operated from 1956 to 1971, at which time the COINTELPRO documents were exposed to the public. The papers reveal harassment, violence, and fraud against progressive groups. The FBI implanted spies and spread rumors to create division within the Black Panthers and other groups. For example, COINTELPRO sent fraudulent letters to the heads of the Blackstone Rangers and the Black Panthers and prevented a planned merger that would have doubled the membership of the Panthers. One of the FBI's goals was to prevent the rise of a Black Messiah and to stop the Panthers from gaining respectability. The FBI especially disliked Hampton's coalition building among Blacks, Whites, and Hispanics. The FBI hired an informant, William O'Neill, to infiltrate the Illinois chapter. With the help of information from Neal, the FBI orchestrated the assassination of Fred Hampton and Mark Clark, another Black Panther. At around 4 a.m., 14 police officers organized by state's attorney Edward Hanrahan raided Fred Hampton's apartment and fired 99 shots. Fred was sleeping in his bed, and he was shot twice point blank in the head. Hampton became a martyr of the progressive movement, and his assassination united blacks, Latinos, and whites. Harold Washington, an Illinois state senator, became a Panther supporter after touring the scene of Fred Hampton's assassination. He was outraged by the government's use of violence and started working politically with the Rainbow Coalition. In 1983, Harold Washington ran for Chicago mayor on a Rainbow Coalition platform and won. Washington won 21% of the white vote, which at that time was astonishing for a black politician. Winning this 21% was crucial for being elected as the first black mayor of Chicago. It was not until the election of Mayor Harold Washington that organizers realized the strength of the Rainbow Coalition. Jacoby Williams, a professor of history at Indiana University, argues in his recent book, From the Bullet to the Ballot, that the successful use of the Rainbow Coalition's strategy of racial and class solidarity resulted in the elections of the first black mayor of Chicago and the first black president. Barack Obama had seen the success of Rainbow Coalition politics during Harold Washington's 1983 mayoral campaign, and he was a community organizer in Chicago during Washington's first term. But in 2000, when Obama ran for Congress against original Rainbow Coalition member Bobby Rush, he lost. Subsequently, Obama formed racial coalitions in Chicago and Illinois and successfully ran for U.S. Senate. In 2008, President Obama replicated coalition building on a national scale and became the first African-American president of the United States. He won 43% of the white vote, which even today is astonishing. The untimely death of Fred Hampton was a tragedy. However, his legacy and that of the Rainbow Coalition lives on, triumphing over discrimination and intolerance. As Fred Hampton famously said, you can kill the revolutionary, but you can't kill the revolution. Bobby Field is going through all types of physical and mental torture. But that's all right, because we said even before this happened, and we're going to say it after this, and after I'm locked up, and after everybody's locked up, that you can jail a revolutionary, but you can't jail a revolution. Right. You might want to liberate like Eric Cleave out the country, but you can't run liberation out the country. You might murder a freedom fighter like Bobby Hutton, but you can't murder freedom fighting.